Hello everyone, welcome back to Jimmy's Geeky Art. I'm Jimmy. Today I am drawing Optimus Prime. I'm using a lot of materials in the video and actually I took the time after filming was complete to go through and make a list of every single item I used. Pencils, the pens, the markers, even the camera, everything. Just in case you were interested or you were like, oh, what was that? One thing I did this video, I didn't speed it up quite as much as normal. The first part for speed where I was catching in because you really couldn't see the non-photo blue pencil very much. And then the rest of the video I think I did at a three times the original rate. And so what I want to do the rest of the video mostly is just kind of talk about Transformers. I like Transformers. So I'd love to hear what you think about Transformers. Leave your comments or questions or whatever down in the comments below. That'd be awesome. And I won't mention the last night much because I don't know, spoiler stuff, whatever. I think I'll pass on that part. Um, but all the older stuff I'll, I'll talk about. I remember the Transformers, the animated series in the afternoons, coming home from school for several years watching that. And as a result, around that same time, getting into the whole Transformers thing. And I mean, to me, that's what you did as a kid in the 80s. Most everything you liked had all the accoutrements as you would say in french if you liked a cartoon show chances are there's a comic book chances are there's toys there might be a movie <laughs> there could be trading cards maybe a halloween costume who knows there's all sorts of stuff you could get into and so i got into transformers just by watching television after school and i really think part of it was the robotic voices kind of captured my imagination just even in the trailer I want for some of the old toys and one for the comic books, actually, even though it's using the stuff from the cartoon series. I really think that robot's on the stars. That whole deal <laughs> kind of like captured my imagination. Oh, it sounds like a robot. I love the Transformers cartoon. I feel like that is like the whole 80s are wrapped up. Oh, well, this came out. I loved it. That came out. I loved that, too. Oh, I love this, too. And I got the toys. I mean, all these different shows in the 80s had cartoons and I, I was getting toys for G.I. Joe's, uh, Silverhawks, He-Man, Transformers mask i mean there's just tons and tons of stuff that was a cartoon and a toy but yeah the transformers were so much fun i remember in third grade i remember getting some insecticons three of them in fact like a beetle a grasshopper and another one i, I forget what they all were and i remember taking those to school and if i remember correctly at least one of them got stolen probably by mike because that dude was a big bully every school had a bully my school with the bully was Big Mike. But I'm not sure how many times he had failed. He was a big, big kid. I remember him taking my A-Team band. Oh, A-Team's another one. That wasn't a cartoon, but I had A-Team toys too. I mean, I had toys for everything back in the day. It, apart from the show and the comic books, because I love that stuff too. But yeah, I mean, I love the Transformer, but just taking a toy that was a robot and then moving it around and making it into a car or to a plane or to what, whatever. I, I like the ones that had triple changers. I think that's what they were called. I had a couple of those. One was a train a plane and a robot, and I think the other one was something similar, actually, like a plane, a truck, and a robot or something. Yeah, same, same kind of deal. Those were kind of fun. I never got the OG Optimus or Megatron. I remember Christmas 1986 was like the big Transformer year. I think 85 was probably the big Thundercat year. I'm just, I, mean, I don't know. I try to think back over Christmases and what I got. I, I remember one Christmas getting tons of Thundercats. You know, the, the battle tank and all the different toys and stuff. And then one year I got most of the, probably most of the line of the ones that came out after the Transformers, the animated movie. I, man, I love those toys. Galvatron was, was great. And then Ultra Magmus or something like that. I may be getting the last name slightly wrong, but something to that effect. He was kind of a replacement for Optimus in my mind, even though Hot Rod became Rodimus Prime, was the Prime. But he was in the toy... He had a big giant trailer, but the actual cab that you put the head on and put in part of the trailer to make the big body, it was a white version of Optimus. I don't know. I, I don't know how many of these toys left, and I've, I think I've told the story on the on the podcast before. Basically, all of my Star Wars stuff went away, all my He-Man stuff, most of my G.I. Joe, most of my Transformers. I have a few things that survived. Transformers-wise, I can only think of two things that I think I still have out of my pretty massive collection and that's Hot Rod and he's not completely complete but he's mostly there and then the the truck part of Ultra Magmus I don't think I have anything else I mean I've gotten a few here and there I mean I can't buy everything I'd like to sometimes but I can't and I guess that's the thing too like 
I look back on this stuff and I think about it and I'm like, man, this was so much fun. I really enjoyed having this this toy or that toy. And it's that whole nostalgia thing, that whole childhood was nice and it makes me feel good, blah, 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 like, you know, nostalgia does. But yeah, I have tons of Star Wars junk now. And so I can't really go out and get a whole bunch of other junk. I, I just can't. But anyway, going back to Transformers, I mean, I had so many of them. You know, the smaller ones, I, I love Devastator, you know, combining the little green dump truck and cement mixer making the big robot. And then uh, I think Rescuer was the one for the cop car and the ambulance and stuff like that. I had those. I had Metroplex, which was a giant robot that turned into like a little city for the smaller little Transformers. I love the toys, love the show. The other thing I had a lot of, I had, I think, basically number one through number 50 of the old Transformer comic books. And so that's one of the, again, one of the few things that have survived. I think I still have those somewhere in storage and who knows what they're looking like at this point right now. But more or less, I have one through 50. And I don't know, I like comic books. I had a ton of comic books as a kid. I had too much of everything, quite honestly, I guess. But when it comes to comic books, other than the Transformers and G.I. Joe, because I already like Transformers and G.I. Joe, I would get some other ones just based on what was on the cover. I remember getting a Fantastic Four because the thing was on the cover and I thought he looked interesting. Stuff like that. And so I, I had some other ones. My brother had comics. He had mostly uh, Sergeant Rock, G.I. Combat, stuff like that. He didn't do as much of the superheroes. He had some Conan the Barbarian, different things. So I, I'm for the most part, I wouldn't really read the comic books. I would just look at the pictures and try to find something to draw because that's, I mean, that's what I did when I was a kid. If I wasn't playing Atari Nintendo type thing or playing with a toy or watching TV, I was probably drawing something. But yeah, that, that was my main thing. And, and once we had a VCR, you know, a few years later, at some point when we got one, I loved the fact I could pause TV, pause movies, and try to draw stuff like the Jetsons or the Flintstones or whoever. I guess that's enough of that nostalgia geek out stuff, whatever that is. I don't know. But yeah, not, suffice to say, I really like Transformers. Always have since I was seven or so. All right. Well, let's talk about not Transformers the movie, which came out in 1986, but just Transformers, July 3rd, 2007. So 10 years ago. That's hard to believe, personally. Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox. And the Transformers. <laughs> that movie was cool. I like it. I still like it. I know people complain about Shia LaBeouf. I think people complain about Megan Fox. In all the Transformers movies, there's things I don't like. There's some uncomfortable humor here in the first Transformers movie, I think, personally. This first movie made $319 million here in the U.S., $709 million around the world. Rotten Tomatoes looked that up. 57% with the critics, 85 with the audience. And again, this whole series, Michael Bay, people people make fun of Michael Bay from blowing up everything. I mean, what's there to say? Bumblebee's cool. Optimus is cool. I've always would have liked the Transformers to look a little more like the old cartoons. I mean, they kind of resemble them sometimes, depending on certain situations. I understand the whole vehicle aspect makes sense that someone's endorsed them and got them paid to be a part of it or whatever. But the robot form, I would like to be a little less geary and more old school robot but yeah i mean i like transformers i mean the whole idea of the whole all spark and then i think it goes into that even more in the second one they did the interesting thing of making it older than it was you know like having stuff frozen in time and and megatron has been here for what a hundred thousand years or something ridiculous and so they they definitely added some elements to make it a little less just oh these robots just showed up i don't know i, I like transformers i really do the Revenge of the Fallen. I, I went and saw this movie in the IMAX. This was my first IMAX movie. I, I guess that also kind of made me hope the movie was a little better than it ended up being. Came out June 24, 2009. So it made $402 million here in the U.S. and 836 around the world. Rotten Tomatoes. The critics hated it. 19%. Audience went down from 85 for that first movie down to 57 for Revenge of the Fallen. I guess we'll move on from Revenge of the Fallen over to Dark of the Moon. Dark of the Moon came out in 2011. The numbers once more, 352 million here in the US, 1.1 billion dollars worldwide. And I really liked Dark of the Moon. Up to this point, it's my second favorite out of the franchise, which I guess some people would say isn't saying much. I enjoyed it, I really did. I liked the whole thing where they were trying to do the bridge to bring Cybertron to Earth that was gonna destroy the world. The whole Chicago is under lockdown, the ploy where they send the Transformers away and they're really not going anywhere. I mean, there's just some cool stuff in there. It really is. I really enjoyed it. 
And this is the first time we went away from the original cast. We didn't have uh, Megan Fox here. We had uh, another lady. It do honestly doesn't even matter. But the current girlfriend of Witwicky. <laughs> I liked it, though. I really did. The critics of Rotten Tomatoes went up from the 19% of The Revenge of the Fallen up to 35%. The audience was actually around the same. It was 55% for this. So it actually was down for Revenge of the Fallen. So I guess, again... I don't always agree with the audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes. And I did like they brought back more of the original cast, you know, the supporting cast out there in this one too, again. Um, and they've been, they were in these first three movies. You know, in the fourth movie, we went away from those supporting cast members. We went away from everybody. And for the most part, I didn't think it was totally horrible, but the first three movies basically are in the neighborhood of two hours and 30 minutes. The first one, two hours and 23 minutes. The second one, two hours, 24. The third one, two hours, 34 minutes. Once you get past two and a half hours in this kind of movie, it's too long. And that's my main problem with Age of Extinction. I didn't mind Mark Wahlberg and his little family and the whole deal. It made a billion dollars again. It was popular enough. The critics, again, hated this movie. 18% were the critics, 51% of the audience. About halfway through the movie, I think it is, they come to a point where they're on a giant spaceship. And it seems like they're about to defeat the evil... Decepticons. Then there's an entire another half of the movie where they go to China and there's dino bots. When I'm in the theater thinking, wow, this is way too long, it's bad. So actually, the more I think about it, maybe this is the worst movie so far because I don't think I ever got bored with the second one. I didn't like those two robots and their potty humor. And here, I just got bored. So yeah, I guess this is the worst one, even though I, I don't necessarily think of it as the worst one. Yeah, even though there's a couple of these movies, I guess, technically, I don't particularly like. I still want to see more of them. At least I do. I'm not sure how everyone else's feeling is. A Bumblebee movie will be set in the 1980s, and this will be a smaller budget film, smaller scale, not as many special effects shots. But this will be great for the whole 80s nostalgia of the original Transformers. And so this could be a lot of fun. This might be the X-Men first class of Transformer movies. <laughs> I guess we'll wait and see. Well, this is my finished drawing of Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, from back in the 1980s version of the Transformers cartoon, which I still look on with fondness. And I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. And I guess if you like this drawing, give me a thumbs up down below, leave a comment. And again, there are links to all the products I used, all the pens, pencils, and markers, paper, everything, down in the description. So thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Jimmy and Georgia to see more of my artwork. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking right up here. Here's one of my recent videos that you might enjoy. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.